Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, we're back on Project Ruby, but we're changing gears a little bit. We're going to switch over and do some work on this passenger door. I did start welding or tacking in the, uh, the firewall panel uh, and kind of ran into a little bump in the road on that. So we'll get to that in a second. But this door has like six uh, pretty good size uh, slide hammer holes and a pretty good dent right here. And, uh, and some other problems over here where they kind of uh, the door got kinked in or something and they just kind of pushed it out. So uh, I think today we're just going to take care of the uh, slide hammer holes. We'll do the other part on another video. But uh, yeah, we got to get this pushed out and kind of sweetened up. It's going to take body filler no matter how hard I work at it. But, uh, you know, it, we're going to try to get it out as far as we can and flatten that thing out the best we can. Let's go over and take a quick update of uh, some of the other stuff I've got done since I last saw you guys. And then we'll get to work on this door. Okay, I got started tacking the uh, firewall in with the TIG welder and uh, you see here all these little tacks. Now from about here to about there is over two and a half hours work, believe it or not. It was just to, you know, start in the middle, get a little tack, tap it, get this thing lined up, tack it, crawl in and out of the car a bunch of times, hammering, tapping, and just keep working back and forth. You know, I wanted to do it evenly so we don't have any warpage or any pulling. So um, now I've got, uh, you know, I worked on that and then uh, the next day I came out, I got to work over here, got worked up that way, got this done, started working that way, and then the TIG welder started making a horrendous noise. So I got up and I walked over to it and by the time I got there, uh, it was a cooling fan that was uh, dying on me and when, as soon as I walked up to it, it froze up. So as you can see, uh, got the TIG welder torn, <laughs> torn apart. But uh, I've got a couple of fans on order. They should be here in a few days. And then, uh, then we get that thing put back together and uh, get back to work on it. I wasn't really gonna shoot any video on that, uh, me welding that in and grinding and everything, but you guys let me know if you wanna see a little bit of that. I can shoot a kind of a short video on that so you guys can follow along. I mean, you've already seen a lot of the firewall work, so just let me know. And then uh, the, the brake pedal and clutch assembly, you can see right here. Uh, I finished it up. So I've got the E-clip in, I've got uh, everything final welded. I, uh, it's working really good. I got the return spring in, a tab for that. Um, I even put a little switch in there to, uh, like a safety switch. So the starter won't engage unless you push down on the uh, clutch pedal. Now normally that, uh, the switch goes way back here and it doesn't let the starter engage until the pedal is fully depressed. I just don't have the room for it back there. So uh, I put it here and I made it in such a way so your foot had to be pretty far down on the pedal uh, stroke before it would let the starter engage. So uh, that should work. I got the brake, um, the brake uh, switch in there too. I made sure everything was still working right. So we are pretty much done with these, uh, the pedal assembly and uh, it feels pretty good to get that done after all that work. But uh, now it's time to move over to that door. So let's go take a look at it. Okay, so this is a passenger door, and if you guys see across the bottom here, no rust holes, no problems, no nothing on either side, in really good shape here down, it, it's great, no dents or anything, as far as I can tell. But up here, uh, not, not, that's not the case. So we can see all of the big old slide hammer marks here. What do we got there, four or five? And uh, it's, they just barely pulled it out and put body filler on it. So they had this uh, part that was kinked out, they just kink that back in until it matched the fender. There's a groove right there, you know, and then they just basically put body filler from here all the way over to here. So, and this area is not too bad, but that's where they feathered it out. This drops slowly into this kind of hole here. Um, so if we can do this right, we'll be able to patch all these holes, get this to pull out a little bit, and it'll bring this with it. And then all we have to do is concentrate on getting that, uh, you know, sweetened up a little bit. And then on another video, I think we'll concentrate on that. But uh, if you look at it, you guys can tell, I mean, there's a pretty good gap in there and that's, it's supposed to be flat from one end to the other. So we got, we got our work cut out for us. But first things first, I think we need to get these holes uh, taken care of. Uh, they're like little vol reverse volcanoes. They're, they're sticking out on the inside. So we'll try to crimp all that together, hammer them flat, 
get the MIG welder out, weld them up, the MIG welder still works. And once we do that, I think that's gonna shrink this area a little bit, um, which will help us. And then we can start to try to figure out how to hammer this thing out. All right, had to do a little cleanup inside. There was still a little bit of uh, sound deadening in there. I just a uh, putty knife scraped it right off. After these things are dipped, that stuff is a lot weaker. Um, so undercoating stuff like that, there will be a little bit left over after they're, they're done dipping, especially on the inside of doors and stuff like that. And you can see here, I put some tape around here, just trying to reduce the amount of blood loss. Why we do this with me sticking my arms and hands up in here probably a hundred times. But um, I don't know if you guys can tell, if I can get the angle on it, you see that little crease right there? You can see the sheet metal, see the high spot? So that's running right across there. Stuff like that gives you a good feeling about, hey, I can get this dent out, you know. Um, how we tap that out and get it pushed back the other way, we'll figure that out. But when you see stuff like that, then you have definite things you can address to try to get that panel back out where it belongs. And that's ultimately what we wanna do, get as close as we can. So uh, I can't really show you guys me, you know, those little volcanoes are like this. I'm just gonna push them back down on themselves and hammer on them. And then we'll get the MIG welder out, weld them up, and then uh, kind of reassess what we got going on, on the other side. Good times. All right, you guys like that door cam I gave you there, huh? The things I do to give you guys a good shot. So uh, I tried pliers to pinch them and I just couldn't get, obviously there's not much room, so I couldn't reach it and get a good perch on it to pinch it around. So what I did was I took the dolly and I slid it along and just kept ramming into it until it finally started folding over. Once it folded over, then I took this dolly like a hammer and I backed it up with the dolly on this side and I just smashed on those things until they crushed back down. And you can see, I mean, some of these, one of these holes was almost as big as a quarter inch. So uh, we got them shrunk up pretty good. We have six holes total. So let me grab the MIG welder. Um, I did clean this whole area with wax and grease remover and wiped it down good. So we're clean as far as contaminants. So, but we're gonna go ahead and I'll sand this a little bit or wire wheel it and then uh, we'll get the MIG welder out and get these welded up. I'm not really worried about warping. In fact, I hope it pulls uh, a little tight. And then we're gonna try to figure out uh, which direction this dent went in and the direction we need to take it out of. Okay, we got six holes here, so let's just bust them out. I'm gonna hold my stick out a lot farther away because remember, this is pretty thin and since it was crushed and then hammered, uh, it, it's probably thinner than 19 gauge. So I'm gonna hold my stick out farther away so it won't push in too deep. Okay, that one didn't want to cooperate, but the others did. They welded in super nice, had to chase a little bit of a hole there. So I'm gonna let that cool a little bit. We're gonna grind these smooth, so we're kind of working with flat sheet metal, not you know knobs and uh, flat sheet metal. And then uh, let's start figuring out some sort of game plan to remove these high spots and low spots. Okay, let's take a look at this dent here. So we can go by their slide hammer holes that this was a crease. We've got a little crease right here they never touched. So they go right through here. So we got four right here and two right here. So we know this is the deepest portion. Now, we don't know what direction this dent went in. And uh, kind of from what I'm seeing, uh, if you look right here on this where it rolls over towards the glass, towards the wind wing, you can see, now this is supposed to be flat, but you can tell that this is raised right here and it's perfectly in line with about where the dent, center of that dent is. So what I think happened was, this went kind of straight in. Maybe a bumper came in and hit it. I don't know. Um, and you know what happened over here? I have really no idea because this is perfect. I mean, I mean that's almost perfect right there. And we're really good over here. So that gives us an area to bridge across as we try to sweeten this up, which is really good news. 
So I'm just going to go with the assumption that uh, this was pushed in somehow. I don't know how. Uh, maybe somebody kicked it. I don't know. But uh, we're going to start working this dent right here first, and then we're going to work this dent. Now, this is pretty deep right here, but it should come out fairly easy. There are a lot of little depressions in here, and I think that's from them just hitting what looks like ball peen, the backside of a ball peen hammer, the ball peen side, and uh, it was probably too high, and they just hit it with a hammer to get it low so they could slather some body filler on here. But uh, let me change the angle of the camera, and we'll take a look at uh, all our highs and lows, and then we're going to start attacking them. Okay, if we slide the straight edge across here, just laying on its side, we can see right where I uh, filled in that slide hammer hole, it was pretty low. So we're, yeah, 3 sixteenths. Then we come over here, we've got a high spot, um, and then we've got some very shallow low spots. So we don't know, you know, what they did here, but if we turn it this way, if you go from way down there to down here where it's supposed to be straight, we are low throughout the whole thing. And that was their key or their goal was to make this low enough so they could just put body filler on it and just feather it to the edges and no problem. You know, they didn't really care how thick it was. A little thick right there, but for a body shop back in the day, that's nothing right there. I've seen it, you know, half inch thick, three quarters of an inch thick in some spots. So um, let's go ahead and just start, uh, we'll flip this back over and I'll try to use that dolly just like I did to get these uh, little eruptions fixed and we'll see if we can't isolate each one of these and start knocking them out. Okay, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and try this one. Got you back inside. We're just gonna hammer away at this thing. Well, that's working. Let me get the camera out of there before it gets destroyed. And I'm just gonna hammer on it and I'll bring you back in a minute. We'll see what we can do. All right, we're not doing too bad on here. Um, I'm getting there. It's not easy though, because you can't get your hand in there very well. So let me put the straight edge on it. And as you recall, this whole area was low. Now we come across, a little low over here, actually high right here. Then we come over here. And we're way high, right where one of those, um, one of the slide hammer holes was, but it drops off drastically. So we, I think we need to shrink that a little bit. And we'll come along and it's pretty even, even though this area right here is too high where it was too low a minute ago. And then we get it right about here and it's starting to look really good. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we are looking really good. Before, this spot was way down here. So just bringing up that area back there and smoothing this out, because it had all those ripples and the ball peen hammer marks and all that mess. We got that crease out right here. We worked all this up and then this area came up. You know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't distorted. It was just pulled down with the rest of it. And that's what I'm hoping is gonna happen up here. But we haven't got there yet. So we're gonna have to worry about that a little bit later. This body line may not be right. Uh, it looks pretty good, so we'll worry about that in a bit. So right now, uh, what I need to do is start taking care of these high spots. Now, I've tried to hammer each one of my welds and grind it on both sides so it's about the same thickness of the sheet metal. Unfortunately, MIG welding is a lot more brittle than the sheet metal, so it's very resistant to it, very resistant to grinding, uh, opposed to like uh, TIG welding is a lot softer, but no TIG welder today, but I would have probably used the MIG anyways. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and get the spot welder out and we're gonna see if we can, if we do a little bit of uh, shrinking right here, if that, it'll pull that down. So let me get that out and we'll test it out, see what's gonna happen. Then we just have a few little high spots, low spots, and then we can start thinking about, you know, the overall shape of this thing. All right, I got the regular spot welding tip in the stud welder, so it'll, it doesn't have, it's the one without the hole in it, came off my regular spot welder. And you guys can see the chalk lines here. So what I did was I drug the straight edge across here and mapped out the perimeter of the high spot. So pretty much in the center of this one is where that one is, and I can feel it right there pretty bad. Then this one's kind of an odd shape one right here. So we're gonna uh, kind of skirt. I put a dotted line down through here because that's the center. 
So what I'm going to want to do is maybe just hit it in a broad area and then maybe a little bit closer down the middle. We'll just see how it reacts as we go. So let's quit talking it. Let's go ahead and get to it. Getting a little oil can there now. See how that caved in once we took that uh, high spot away? All right, let that cool a second. Ooh, that's hot. Then we'll go right down through here. I think I'm going to start in the middle. And let's hit some of these spots here. Okay, so this one's cooled off and before it was oil canning when it was hot. Now it's not. So it's cooled off, it's tightened back up. It may be a little high right here. I'm, what I'm gonna do for both of these is run the straight edge over it again. I'll wipe everything off. I'll sand some of these blue marks so I know exactly where I'm at. And then we'll run the straight edge again. And then I'll hit any other remaining high spots and I'll just kind of keep that up. And then uh, hopefully we can get this to you know kind of smooth off and then get rid of this, some of that, those, you know, intermittent high spots we have in here. So let me bust that out. I'll bring it right back. Okay, guys, I got, uh, I'm pretty good on the other side. So what you're seeing now is inside the door, I've got a piece of two by six that's actually curved the same shape of the door skin. Um, I've got a board clamped up here to the inner part of the door. Then I've got a piece of cardboard and a piece of aluminum, and that's an inner tube, a little baby inner tube right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna inflate that and push on the outer part of the skin, and then we're gonna flip the door over and hit it with the slapper to try to smooth that out. This is the only way I can think of doing it. I looked for an old uh, ball of my son's or a small one or something, I couldn't find one, so I had that little inner tube and a little Harbor Freight uh, wheel and tire, so I dug it out of there, stuck it in there, and uh, I've got a hose hook to it. So hopefully I won't put too much air in it, but uh, let's go ahead and air it up and see what happens. Sounds like we have a leak somewhere. That's doing the trick right there. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know where that leak is. Maybe this inner tube's got a leak, I don't know. Okay, that's feeling pretty good right there. Uh, let's go ahead and flip this thing over before that tube pops and see if we can hit, hit it with a slapper tool. Okay, now with that uh, inner tube and that two by six pushing up on this, I can use a slapper tool. There's no other way for me to like hold a dolly and hit it. I just can't get my arm in there good. So hopefully this works. A little low right there. I think we're gonna have to dolly that up a little bit. Let me get this high spot. All right, let's let the air out and I'll put the straight edge on there and see what it looks like. All right guys, that inner tube uh, thing worked pretty good. We're a lot smoother than we were. We still have a little low spot here. And uh, unfortunately, the hose popped off the inner tube, so I couldn't let the air out, and I couldn't get my hand in there, so I had to stick an ice pick in it and pop it. But uh, I'll figure something else out. It's just cheapo inner tube anyways. But if we grab the straight edge, we come along here. This is kind of up a little bit, but I just checked the other door, and there's a slight, the slightest amount of uh, kind of a curve right in this area on, this, on, the, on the other door that's not damaged. 
So we're pretty close to what factory was. Then we'll come along here and it's looking really good right through here, maybe a little high right through here, maybe. And then we'll come through here and it really flattens out really nice right through here. This is basically almost perfect right there. And then we'll come along and then we get a little bit low right in here, right to here. And then it's even lower right there. And then we get back to, you know, basically perfect. So we got a little low spot right here and this is a little soft. It's not oil candy where it'll stay, but it's not as stiff as it should be, you know. So I think once we get this low spot out, um, we'll be good. The thing is, uh, since I just popped that tube, I got to find some other way of pushing up on this. So I'm going to find something that'll sit in this area, maybe that two by six again. And then what I can do is push up really hard with something and then uh, use a slapper and slap around it. And hopefully that'll come up, you know, but uh, that'll be the plan. Let me go look for something to uh, push up on that. And then, uh, then we'll get back at it. Okay, there it is, the Markomatic spreader. So this is a um, spring compressor for like a flathead. So it goes in there and it opens it up and push the springs down so you can take the retainers off and block of wood with a hole drilled in it and one of my little pads from uh, DA I cut down, remember when I was working on the quarter panel. So we're gonna jam that in there, turn that screw and then it, that'll spread and push on, this will push on the sheet metal right here in the low spot and then the other piece will push on a piece of two by four inside there. So uh, it should work, hopefully, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna get back at uh, hitting it with a slapper and see what we can do. Okay, the Markomatic is working, um, but you can see my line right here. I, I took a straight edge across there and I marked the basically the edges of the low spot. So this whole area is low right here um, and it needs to come up and we need to slap here with the slapper to try to get this to come up and then that to you know release it. And uh, I'm having a lot of trouble getting that to happen. So I think I need to get medieval on this thing. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I've got a board about this long up underneath there, spreading the load from this pushing on the uh, inner panel of the door. I don't wanna distort that and have to fix that. So I'm gonna see the longest board I can fish inside there so I can spread the load. I'm gonna switch over to this larger pad and kind of position it since we're kind of like an angle here. I'm gonna position it like that crank the crap out of that thing and just put as much pressure as I can on this thing because you really have to overstress that steel and then whack the crap out of it, you know, with the slapper to get any kind of movement. So, and we're not super low here. I mean, we're, you know, just a tiny bit, you know, not, not minuscule, but uh, we can certainly do better. And I'm hoping if I get this up, that it'll start, it'll push this line down over here. You know, it'll, it'll just kind of go like that. You know, that's the whole idea. That's why I'm working this so hard. So let me, uh, let me see how big a two by four or whatever I can fit inside there. And then we'll swap over. All we gotta do is just pop that out and pop this one in the hole right here. So it's, uh, that's working out pretty good. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna crank the crap so this is really pushed up. And then we'll come back and we'll start beating the crap out of this thing. All right, let's crank this up. Put a lot of pressure on that thing. Ugh. That looks like about all it'll take. Maybe a little bit more. Ugh, that's about all I'll do. All right, that's up there quite a bit. So I think if we start slapping on it, it should help. So we're pushed, actually, we're pushed about flush on this side. But we are high right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start hitting it with a slapper right here. We may move that around a little bit and hopefully we get some action out of it. Okay, switch angles a little bit just to show you a little bit how this is affecting this. So if you look now, we have a low spot right here, whereas before that was a high spot and this uh, straight edge was rocking because that having that down, it actually pulled that up. And once we reversed it and lifted this up, now this is too low. So. If we can get this to flatten out, we should be perfect right over here. So fingers crossed on that. Let's start whacking on this thing.
Okay guys, I've uh, been at this about 45 minutes with the slapper tool, with my little rubber mallet, with my pointed uh, hammer. Now remember I ground this to more of a round point than a pointy point. Uh, and so what, I, the, what I've been doing is I've been running the straight edge along here and you can see these uh, chalk lines right here. And so at the apex of every high spot that I see, um, I put a little dash and I just move up about an inch, put another dash wherever it is and you can see it kind of moves diagonally, then it jumps way over here. Uh, so uh, this area can affect this area, just like this area is affecting this area. So I'm trying to get this general area, to, this to come up, those to go back where they belong, and just try to slowly get this to come up. And I'm reaching the point of diminishing returns here. This is still low, uh, but I've had some progress over here. It's not doing too bad. So basically all I've been doing with it pushing up really hard right here, I've been going and just tapping lightly. Right on my chalk lines. And uh, I, I'm using that as my map where to go and just trying to get that to go down. And these are barely up. So I'm just trying to tap those down. Then I wipe all the chalk line off. Then I put the straight edge on and I do it all again. Slowly just pick at it little by little. We've got a little high spot right here that's uh, actually holding this up over the top of this low spot. And I marked that with the chalk as well. And then I've been using my little PDR hammer with the little rubber head on it. And I just been doing the same thing, little chalk lines here and just tapping super light right on here with pressure right here. And this is actually getting uh, to looking pretty good right here. So uh, I don't know how much more I can get out of this without getting really drastic, you know, like, uh, you know, putting a lot of, getting the porter power out. And then I'm probably gonna bend the door, you know, pushing that hard. And that's not what I wanna do. Certainly don't wanna make more damage trying to fix other damage. And it, the, the door's looking good, don't get me wrong. It's gonna take some filler right here and not much. So let me go ahead and do a little bit more work and then I'm gonna bring you back and then we're just gonna take a final look at this thing. I'll run the DA over the whole thing. We'll wipe it with some wax and grease remover and uh, see how well we did. Uh, it's a it's hundred times better than it was when we started. So, you know, I, I, I can't be shooting for perfection trying to fix uh, you know, something else that's been really beat up pretty bad. So. Uh, let me spend a little more time with this and then I'll bring you right back and we'll take a look at it. Okay guys, I surrender, at least for now. It is not, you can see the light going through there. There's a lot of ripples and there is a low spot right there. And I'm really not happy that I could not get that out. But if we look at it this way, it's got really good shape. And actually uh, putting the straight edge across there, it's not a lot of filler. You see the ripples, see that low spot right there. And it's not super low, it's just a little low. So, but the door has some really good shape to it. The body line right here, I'm seeing a few things with the wax and grease remover in it, on it um, that I might be able to get out. And uh, we are gonna hang this door on the car with the fenders and do all the alignment to the body um, before we start spraying epoxy. So uh, we are gonna revisit this anyways. But uh, the next step will be this piece right here, and we'll do that, uh, we'll do that on another video. But we are looking uh, a lot better, a lot better. Okay, guys, that pretty much wraps up this video, and uh, it was a tough one, and I knew it would be. Uh, you know, I've done this kind of work before, and uh, luckily we had some decent size access holes. I've worked on some foreign cars where it was just a little tiny hatch at the bottom and uh, virtually impossible to get up, get your arm up in there and do anything. Certainly not swing, you know, uh, maybe a dolly or something to try to push out a dent. They, they can be very tough, but uh, this little shallow kind of a thing, you know, we got the big dents out, got the holes fixed, all the slide hammer holes, and just getting that last little bit, uh, I knew it was gonna be a tough one. And uh, we got as far as we can. I've damaged doors uh, trying to get that last little bit out uh, and had to spend days fixing what I caused just to get back to where I was. So I've learned, uh, learned some valuable lessons over the years. You know, we had, we had to invent a, a tool, we used an inner tube. Whatever it takes to get the job done is what you gotta do. So um, I'm happy with it. 
not thrilled and it's it's solid you know there's no oil canning no nothing so when we get body filler on here it's going to be nice and tight so i'm not too worried about that the body line's looking really good got a couple little ripples over here from me tapping but uh, it's better than ha have a couple little tiny little dingers than have that rise up and fall where we just can't get it out but all in all i'm pretty happy Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.